in the small room of the exhibition, pulsating artistic energy, is this astonishing still life by Vanessa Bell, done in about 1912. Now, it wasn't actually executed at Charleston. This was before they arrived there. But she and Duncan went down to Ashenham House, which was Vanessa's sister Virginia's place. And there they produced some remarkable paintings, not all of which have survived, but this has. And it's by quoting Virginia that we can unlock the cause of this fantastically bold object. On or around 1910, Virginia says, human character changed. And she was referring to a massively influential exhibition which arrived like a meteor in London in 1910. And it was called Manet and the Post-Impressionists. And the man who orchestrated it was someone who was embedded into Bloomsbury, a lover of Vanessa Bell, Roger Fry. The artist included Picasso, Matisse, Gauguin, and all of this, this thrilling new way of looking at the world was decanted onto certain artists, and Vanessa was one of those. All of the ideas, all of the ways of doing this would not have happened had it not been for the guiding hand of these hugely important uh, Impressionist and post-Impressionist painters. Do you see that pitch black in the middle? and it's used with such boldness. And then as you stand back, you see it throws forwards slashes of orange and green and purple. And then as if that were not enough, and so few artists would risk this at this date, she has put a cubist patterned background behind, complex, mosaic-like, faceted, and then add the pot as well. You've got the most sort of violent cacophony of, of, of colours and shapes, and yet she's marshaled them in a, in a way that is totally captivating. Vanessa still, from time to time throughout her life, and we see this in the paintings at Charleston, is able to draw upon this early vocabulary. She developed a, a confidence here with colour, sometimes arbitrary colours, and a, a risk-taking practice with shapes, which held her in very good stead when she was painting anything from other still lives, portraits, and landscapes. And this painting is also a survival. A survival because a lot of her paintings during the Second World War were left in London, in Fitzroy Street, and a bomb fell and destroyed a large proportion of them. I mean, Vanessa was quite philosophical. She said, I can always paint more paintings. But many of them, many of these early works just disappeared. They burnt and were smoked to death. But what happened was there were a few pictures, together with other modernist greats, that they brought to Charleston this was one of them. There's a photograph of it in her studio. Thankfully, she did that. And as a result, a painting which, to my mind, unquestionably shows that Vanessa was at the very front of the English avant-garde has survived and has ended up in this exhibition.